on the surface, this isn't anything interesting. Just a random beige box from years past. Unevenly yellowed beige box, too. I mean, look at that. Wow, you'd almost think those drives are doer. Maybe they are, I don't actually know. But, uh, they match the faceplate, so they can't be that much newer. So that giant process logo on it. Their website, or at least their former website. I'm not sure if they're still in business or not. Reset switch. There's the power. Which honestly does not feel like a very reassuring switch, but it is there. Come and take a look around the machine. You see, again... Well, it's funny. I can be out here for hours, but as soon as I turn the camera on, that's when everybody and their dog decides to come by and interrupt my video making. But anyway... Probably can't read any of that. I can't really read any of that, to be honest with you. It's just FCC IDs, though. 0079033 probably not a date code. I don't think so. But, uh, this looks like an older motherboard, though. I already know what it is, so I'm not really that surprised, but it definitely looks the part of an older machine. And I'm not really sure what they thought the purpose of that was going to be, but, you know, whatever. It is old enough that it's got basically no onboard peripherals. It doesn't even have onboard Ethernet. So, no onboard sound. So this has got video, network, and a sound card installed. Might have had more at one time. Don't really know, but this is how it came to me. However, there's certainly more than meets the eye here. Taking the cover off, again, we don't see anything too interesting. The power supply is completely covered, so I can't even tell you what the ratings are, or if it's any good. But uh, we see a motherboard here. That, uh, it's an Intel motherboard. I don't really see too many markings on it, other than the Intel badge in the lower corner there. But, uh, optical drive is hidden. There's a floppy drive, nothing fancy. Now this, this is actually an 80 gigabyte hard drive. I don't think that is original. It might be, but I really kind of doubt that it is. I'm not leaving an 80 gigabyte hard drive in here. I think that's a little big for a system at this age. I've got a 6.4 gig drive sitting around that's going to be installed in this. It'll be more than enough for what I'm ever going to do. But the interesting part occurs when we take a look at the hardware here. Okay, what do we got? Well, we got three RAM slots. These are PC-133. And I'm trying to think about what would be installed here. I guess we could power it up and find out, but my guess is that it's probably got one gig of RAM, which I don't really need to give it any more than that. So I'll probably just leave that alone. Video is AGP. It's just some rage thing. I might see if I've got something a little better, but for what I'm going to do with this, it's going to end up running Windows 98. So I probably want something that'll work under Windows 98. Sound card is just a generic, yeah, it's, sorry, it's not generic, it is a Creative Labs card, but I can't really tell which one it is, it's nothing particularly great. That Ethernet is a 3Com, it's a 3C905. Got two ISA slots, it's awfully tempting to install something in the ISA slots. Um, I might take the AGP card out and just use PCI video, I mean that seems kind of ludicrous to do in a system, but I'll you know, make use of the higher-end graphics slot, but again, I'm, this, this is running Windows 98. really doesn't need much. I could probably find, like, a, a Mach 64 or something. It'll work just fine in here. But here's the interesting bit. The interesting bit is right here. You can see that this has a giant slot, but this is not a slot processor. No, this is what they used to call a slot-kit adapter. So you can see that we have the slot itself. It's got some jumpers on it, which you might be able to see there. But this actually has a socket 370 socket on it, and allows you to use socket 370 CPUs 
in an old slot one computer, such as this. I have never seen one of these in person, except for this one, which is, you know, long time coming, I'm telling you what. I used to deal with Pentium 2s and Pentium 3s all the time, but I've never seen one of these slotted adapters in the flesh until now. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just cut straight to the chase here, take this thing over to the work area, plug it all in, power it up, see what it does. See if there's anything interesting on that hard drive that this thing can boot. I kind of doubt it though, because I think that probably came out of something else. Okay, it's a little dark, can't really see inside the machine, but we'll flip the power switch. It comes on immediately. It does work. It's an Intel board, so I think F4 is the key that I need to hit. It even has that old computer sound to it, you know? You have noticed this little box here, which connects to this, which is a magnetic reed switch. That is, for lack of a better term, that's a booby trap device that uh, basically, when somebody opens the side panel of this, if it were connected, it would actually be connected to a security panel, which would then dial out to a central monitoring. Uh, in this case, because of where it came from, it would actually dial out to the campus safety office and you draw the ire of campus safety for opening one of these, but anyway. So I press the right key to get in the setup. Alright. Check date and time, whatever, whatever. It's an Intel 440. SE440BX-2 700 megahertz Pentium 3 768 megabytes of RAM Hmm So yeah, we could do better than that I could probably give this one gig So Assuming it will actually take my 512 meg modules So I'll probably do that And uh Maybe I'll do that in another video Or I might just do it in this one, because I am probably, like I said, I'm probably going to replace a hard drive. So, yeah, well, we got, uh, three 256s, so I'll probably take one of the 256s out and replace it with a 512, that'll give me one gig, which is more than enough, or I might just leave it at 768, since it's going to be running Windows 98, there's no real reason to do too much in the way of upgrading. Of course, the battery's dead doesn't surprise me. I always found it funny that Plug and Play OS was always set to no on these. But I don't think it really matters. Peripherals. Should be set to ECP, but again, the battery's dead, so it's not going to make much of a difference. It does see that. You've got a Toshiba CD-ROM drive. Does it actually open? does. It's really loud, but yeah, probably works just fine. Of course, you got your floppy devices, DMI event log, not much in there, video, standard stuff, resources, which used to matter a lot more back in the day when you had cards that were not plug-and-play compatible but basically everything that I've got in here is plug-and-play compatible so I don't need to worry about that I've only ever had to adjust that on one system in recent past and that was because it had a card in it that I had to manually set the uh, set the IRQ and the address range on so I had to reserve it in the BIOS because otherwise the program that used it to communicate couldn't find it. Again, everything else is pretty well standard. So, the one will exit saving changes. We'll see if it'll boot anything. I really don't think it will. This is one of those older systems. So it's going to sit here and it's going to count up all the RAM. And I will sit here and count up all the RAM. This will take a while. Yeah, 
Remember when computers used to sound like this? I don't miss those days. Definitely don't miss those days. I mean, I do, but I don't. I like how quiet things are these days. You know, it's nice to power on a computer and hear the sweet sound of nothing. Oh, that's fine. Alright. Let's see. Safe mode. Might as well go that far. It goes to 8 GP. Does it do anything else? Or does it just kind of sit there? I suspect it's probably just going to kind of sit there. Yeah, I don't think it's going to really do anything else, so... Not really worth wasting a whole lot of time on. I'll pull that drive out, put a different one in, upgrade the RAM while I'm at it. Cut. I didn't change the RAM, because I actually, as it turns out, I think I put all my PC-133 away. I can't find any of it out here. All I've really got is DDR. Whatever. Uh, 768 would be enough for Windows 98 anyway, so I don't really need any more. It would have been nice to get it to a round number, but eh, I don't really care that much. Now that sounds like an old computer. We'll take a look. See it counting up all the memory, one megabyte at a time. That's what takes forever. It's actually F2 to get this on them. I thought it was F4. It's F4 on a lot of Intel boards, but not this one. It might almost be worth downgrading the RAM, honestly. Just putting like 256 megs total in here. It's only going to be running Windows 98, but... Oh well. We can leave it at... ...768. There's our hard drive. She sees everything correctly. It's master. See if there's anything on that drive. Again, I'm going to guess probably not. And given it's getting pretty late, 9 o'clock on a work night, I think I'm going to call it good. Sometimes you can hit spacebar to skip the memory test, but not on this one. It even smells like an old computer. It's got that I've been sitting around for 20 years smell to it. Forlorn corner of somebody's research lab. Because that's where it came from. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's got free BSD on it. Uh, that's probably not going to load. So. Because that should be, if I remember right, this is probably out of an old NAS. I forget which one, though. Boot Sigma NAS normal mode. Let's see if it'll actually boot. Nope. CPU doesn't support long mode. Oh, well. So. Uh, it's more than what the other one had. I'm just put peeling the useless name sticker off of it. So, it's going to get Windows 98 at some point once I go get my desk for 98. And then from there, I'll decide what I do with it. I do have a plan. Uh, I've got some weird hardware that I want to install in this. So, that is what we are going to do. And from there, we'll see what happens. But, it, like I said, it's just going to be another Windows 98 machine. Even though there are 
millions upon millions of Windows 98 machines, and I've certainly got thousands of them in my collection, but I've got specific plans for this, so stay tuned.